the alphas and betas. For every, for every length i, for every z, uh, with, without having to do exhaustive, enum exhaustive uh, enumeration. And you do this using that program. So naively, computing this, computing, computing this quantity uh, takes an exponential time because you have to go through um, every, you have to marginalize out every possible subsequence of, of, of y of length uh, j minus, or i minus 1, excuse me. But you can compute this recursively via Viterbi. So it turns out that alpha, and this is actually what all you have to implement, alpha sub z of i plus 1 is equal to the observation matrix times this. And notice that this is a sum. And Viterbi, instead of, giving, instead of using the sum, it took the max. This is the solution you computed for the previous time step, for the previous uh, iteration of the dynamic programming. And Viterbi chose the max. Here I'm looking at the sum. And as a, as a general principle, when you choose the max, you have, in these probabilities, you have to take the log of the probability. And as a sum, you have to deal with normalization. The backward algorithm just deals with beta. How do you compute the beta? And you just do it recursively backwards. And again, it's, it's just this formula. Um, so here's the forward backward algorithm. You run forward, you run backwards, and then you compute this using this formula. And then you have the marginal probabilities of uh, every token being uh, being of every token being any part of speech tag uh, given any sentence. And then you 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 finish the estimation step, and then you do maximum likelihood estimate to get a new A and O matrix. Then you run forward backwards to get these new marginal probabilities. And then you use these marginal probabilities to get a new A and O matrix until you converge. So just to recap of the unsupervised training of hidden Markov models, we're given only the word sequence. And we want to train the, our, our, actual, our full model on maximizing the likelihood over this, over our, what we observe in the training data. The Ys are hidden. And we train using the EN algorithm. You know, it's guaranteed to converge to a local optimum. So one thing is that if you don't observe the number of what, possible diff numbers of different y's, how do you choose the number of different y's, right? <coughs> so how many choose the number of hidden states? In part, if, we, if you're given the labels, oh, there's, there's six part of speech tags, and there's six hidden states. Not surprisingly, uh, one often does this via cross-validation. You have your training set, you have your validation set, and then you see which you see which number of hidden states maximizes your problem, maximizes your likelihood of the validation set. Okay, so just to recap, um, today we looked at sequence prediction, uh, sequence modeling, and hidden Markov models. Models all pairwise models pairwise dependencies in sequences. Uh, it's compact because it only models pairwise sequences pairwise dependencies, and it only models them in the tag space, which is much smaller than the word space. Right? So that's a quadratic dependency on the number of tags, linear dependency on the number of words in a vocabulary. The main limitation, just like in naive Bayes, is that it, makes a, it still makes a lot of independence assumptions, right? Still makes a lot of independence assumptions. And so it has, you know, by today's standards, it has relatively poor predictive accuracy in, in most tasks. So next week, I'll be talking about conditional random fields, which is a sequential version of logistic regression. Just like our hidden Markov models, it's a sequential version of naive Bayes. Conditional random fields is a sequential version of logistic regression, removes many of the independent assumptions, more, much more accurate in practice. Of course, it can only be trained in a supervised setting, right? Because it requires both X and Y, although it can't be trained. And um, it is state of the art, still state of the art in many, many problems. And again, recitation tonight, recap of Viterbi and four backwards. Uh, question. Yeah. So, what would you do when you have super, like when you have label data and label data and label data? So, you would use semi-supervised learning. So, um, let's see here. <coughs> so, 
So you could do the arc. So if every instance is, if every training game sample is sampled independently from the test distribution, just some of them have Ys and some of them don't, you just, you just do the arg max over their product. And for the ones that have Ys, you, you, mark, you, you arg max over P of X comma Y. For the ones that don't have Ys, you just arg max over P of X. And then, and then once you take the negative log of that, it decomposes you know, additively in the standard way. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Yeah. So how do you know that the EM algorithm will converge? Right. So there's a mathematical proof of that. Um, uh, I could look it up on Wikipedia. I, did, I, uh, I, I don't have time. I didn't have time to go over that in class. Yeah. So what again is the forward backwards algorithm versus the EM maximization for using the so, so in the EM algorithm. If you if you had the right if you had the y's you could predict maximum likelihood you could you could just you could just do the counting right to, to fit your model um, if you had the model you could predict the y's uh, you, you, well the term you perturbate predicts the best possible y's you actually want to predict the distribution over the y's okay so you want to predict for this word what is the distribution of noun determiner or verb right because Maximum likelihood says, this is the maximum likelihood solution, right? So you actually want to do something softer, which is say, what is the, instead of the indicator function, what is the probabilities, right? Okay. And computing these probabilities requires the four backward algorithm, which is very similar to Viterbi. The key difference is that instead of doing a max, you do a sum. Otherwise, it's structurally almost identical to Viterbi. So Viterbi, just go back here. It's probably having too many slides. But Viterbi always takes the max, right? It says, I just care about the maximizer of the probability. I want to find a single sequence that maximizes this. I don't, want to, I don't care about the smooth estimates. Right. And so out for the forward backward, the only difference between the forward algorithm and the Viterbi algorithm is the forward algorithm actually takes the sum of this, 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 and this, 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 and this, 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 whereas Viterbi takes the max. And that's how you compute the marginal distributions, as opposed to just the single most likely sequence. Any other questions? So what again did we randomize to initialize the EM? You randomize the model. The A and the O matrix. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yep. The forward back and forth is actually for the expectation, right? Not the That's right. That's right. And then you use the marginals for the Yep. Yep. The four backward gives you the marginals, which is just a smooth version of the standard supervised learning maximization stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once you initialize that image, see, like you can't you can't like resize it in mixed iterations, right? Or once you initialize the what? The A matrix, like you can't resize it. Right, you you fix the so the number of you fix the number of states, hidden states a priori in the in the sort of the simple way to train HMMs. And then how do you like choose that? Change that? Or how do you choose that? Like you know, uh, if you most people just do cross validation. Like you, could, okay. you have a test set and you could or validation set, and you can compute the likelihood of your model on the validation set. And you just choose. And if you start overfitting, you have a super high likelihood in your training set, super low likelihood in your validation set. Okay. So if you want to re recap of this, uh, you come to recitation tonight.